Hello and welcome to this video on mutually exclusive events. Now let's just initially dive into what the definition is and then we'll kind of reflect on what that means. Now two events A and B are mutually exclusive if they can't happen at the same time. Let's do some examples of this of two events. Now it could be that the first event is that your favourite colour is yellow. That may be true or not true. But then a mutually exclusive event would be that your favourite colour is green. And to be mutually exclusive means they can't happen at the same time. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be one of these. There could be some other events, C for example, where your favourite colour is blue, etc. But it's just that those two events can't happen at the same time. Or we could have, for example, winning the lottery and not winning the lottery. They would be mutually exclusive because they can't happen at the same time. Now, in fact, the difference of this example to this one is that here, actually, one of these two things must happen if we buy a lottery ticket, whereas here, there could be other possibilities. Now, here's the important form that we'll need uh, for the questions we're about to do. Now, if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A happening or B happening is the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening. So for example, let's just say that the probability that some random person's favourite colour is yellow is 0.2. And let's just say that the probability that someone's favourite colour is green is 0.4. Then the probability that their favourite colour is yellow or green would just be 0.2 plus 0.4 is equal to 0.6. Now there's one final thing I have to add, is that if you want to find the probability of something not happening, so A doesn't happen, well for example, let's just say the probability of winning the lottery is 0.01, a 1% chance of winning the lottery, that's pretty high isn't it? Then what we need to ensure is that because one of these two things has to happen, then the probability of either happening is 1, i.e. it's certain that one of these two things must happen. Now if the probability of this one is 0.01, then what does the probability of the other one have to be such that these add up to 1? Well it's 0.99, we just did 1 minus that to get that value there. So therefore the probability of A not happening, like not winning the lottery, is just one minus the probability of it happening. So it's one minus the probability of it happening. I'm gonna put a box around that as well because that's very important. And just to say that this is only true if A and B are mutually exclusive. And we'll see an example of that later where that might not be the case. Right, let's dive straight into these questions here. We've got question one. The table shows the probability of getting each outcome on a spinner. So we've got these different outcomes x, it could be a, b and c on the spinner, and we've got the probabilities of each. We've got 0.6 probability for a, 0.1 probability for b, and we don't know the probability for c. So part a is what is the probability of getting a or b in a single spin? Now, these are all mutually exclusive. You can't get A and B at the same time on the spinner. And we're not going to count the sort of edge cases where it kind of falls on the corner. We're just going to say it's A, B or C. So what's the probability of A or B? Well, we can just use our formula directly. Well, these mutually exclusive, so it's the probability of A plus the probability of B. So it's going to be 0.6 plus 0.1, which is equal to 0.7. What about the second one? What is the probability of getting a C? Well, the total probability of mutually exclusive outcomes has to add up to 1. So if these two add up to 0.7, then we can just do 1 minus 0.7 to get the final value, which is 0.3. And then we know that all of these add up to 1, because 0.6 plus 0.1 plus 0.3, they add up to 1. So all the probabilities add up to 1. And then finally, C, what is the probability of not getting B. So the probability of not getting B, where there's a 0.1 chance of getting B, then the chance of not getting B is just 1 minus that. So 1 minus 0.1 and that is equal to 0.9. Right, question 2. The probability of Sheila eating kangaroo for dinner is 0.6 and the probability of eating koala for dinner is 0.7. Explain why the probability of eating kangaroo or koala is not 1.3. So it might be that someone's tried to add these values because the probability of eating kangaroo or koala, they've seen the word or and therefore they've tried to 
and these probabilities to get to 1.3. And clearly that's not possible. You can't have a probability that's more than one because one means certain, doesn't it? Now the problem is you can only add if the events are mutually exclusive i.e. can't happen at the same time. But it's possible that we eat both kangaroo and koala for dinner. In fact, we might have a probability of eating uh, pasta for dinner as one. Like, it's absolutely certain that we eat pasta for dinner, but that doesn't mean we're not eating anything else for the dinner. So, eating kangaroo and eating koala is not mutually exclusive. Now, a final problem. On another three-sided spinner, the probability of A is 0.4, and the probability of spinning a B is three times that of spinning a C. Determine the probability of C. Now we don't know these two probabilities, but we know the probability of spinning a B is three times that of spinning a C. So if we made that probability say A, then the probability of getting a B would be 3A because it's three times the probability. So we're using a bit of algebra here. We don't know something, so we're therefore using a variable to represent its value. Now we know that probabilities have to add up to one. So therefore we know if we add 0.4, 3A and a, then that gives us 1. The probabilities add up to 1. Now if we simplify this, 0.4 plus 4a, we're collecting like terms, is 1. Now a, we're multiplying it by 4, we're adding 0.4 to it. So let's subtract 0.4 from both sides. So we therefore get 4a is, if we subtract 0.4 from 1, we get 0.6. And finally, to get rid of that times by 4 on the a, we divide both sides by 4, and that means that a is 0.15. Now, an alternative way we could have done this is to use ratio. If the probability of getting a is 0.4, then the probability of not getting a is 0.6. So that total probability there is 0.6, but we know that the ratio of these two probabilities is 3 to 1, because we know that that probability is 3 times bigger than that probability. So we're therefore splitting 0.6 in the ratio 3 to 1. So we could say, well, 4 parts is equal to 0.6, and therefore 1 part would be a quarter of that, which is 0.15. And then now we need to find the probability of C, and that's just that value of A. So that would be the answer. So the probability of C is 0.15 in both cases. So there's two approaches you could use to get that answer.